So we're here at the Embedded World, and uh, who are you? My name is Jack Ogawa. I'm the Senior Director of Marketing for our Microcontroller Business Unit. And um, here at the Embedded World, you announced something in partnership with ARM. Um, what are you working on with them? So indeed, so we had a release on Monday that talked about how PSOC 6, our secure microcontroller, uh, supports the highest level of security that's been defined by the Platform Security Architecture Initiative from ARM. Highest level? The highest level. So we provide three levels of isolation within the microcontroller. The first level is an isolated execution environment for secure processes. The second level is an isolated area for a root of trust. And then the third level is being able to isolate the trusted applications within that. So providing those three levels allows us to achieve that highest level um, for PSA. Because the PSOC 6 is an ARM Cortex-M4 based uh, solution, right? Right. But the way that you do P PSOC, you have all kinds of uh, um, proprietary or designs that you do security. You've been doing before? That's right. this is the next level or? That's right. So we have some a uh, unique capability in the architecture, starting with the, with the fact that there are two cores in the part. We also have utilized uh, memory and, and peripheral protection units that are fully configurable. So now I can control access to the resources in the part, creating the isolation that we just talked about. So which are the two cores? You have the Cortex-M4? We have a Cortex-M4 and a Cortex-M0 Plus in the part. And the M0 Plus is kind of like the security core, or no? That's right. So in, in, a, in a typical application, we would dedicate the M0 Plus to security functions. And those security functions can be firmware update applications, as well as perhaps, for example, a TLS stack, or some other things that you can imagine. So is it correct to say that um, ARM has suggested last year, maybe a little bit before they started uh, uh, launching, announcing the ARM V8M, uh, which has some security inside of it, and you are working with ARM to make it work on the ARM V7. That's right. So initially the PSA effort was centered around V8M, and, and that was the first implementation of Trust Zone M. What we've done with PSOC 6, since it predates that activity, we actually have used V7M core, obviously, to uh, uh, with some unique configuration around in the architecture to implement the security. Now what we're doing is we're taking trusted firmware M, which is the open source firmware that's available from PSA, and we're taking that and implementing it on PSOC 6 uh, on the M4, which is obviously a V7M core. You said uh, the open source security Firmware, what's the name? It's called Trusted Firmware M. And, uh, so it's not the Trust Zone, it's some other, it's an open source security. That's correct. So Trust Zone is actually in the silicon. Trusted Firmware M is then the firmware that runs the silicon. So in our case, rather than having a, tr a Trust Zone capable core, we have an M4 core and an M0 core. We're, provi we're able to provide the security that's uh, achieved by a V8M architecture, but we've done it with our cores, and so therefore we can take that firmware and put it into PSOC 6 and achieve the same security level. And so is that a new announcement for the new firmware? Is like the new generation of firmware or something that all the PSOCs can just use? Or? Yeah, so it's, that firmware would be uh, usable by all of our PSOC 6 devices that have secure capability. They for free, they can just update to that if they want? That's right, and that's the philosophy of PSA, is they want to broaden the ability for people to, to implement security, and their strategy is to make threat models available for everybody, uh, firmware through open source available, and then of course, uh, proliferate the marketplace with uh, products that use ARM and tech, um, core technology. So I would imagine that maybe uh, the ARM V8M, which hasn't kind of shipped, kind of, not yet, but, uh, when it's hardware security is the best way. And you have hardware security because you have those two cores. So does that mean you are as secure as whatever's gonna come out with ARM V8M? That's an excellent question. So by analysis, Trust Zone has two levels of protection that's, that are implemented. Because of our architecture, not only can we cover those two levels, but we also add that third level that I mentioned, which is being able to isolate the root of trust. So if you had a single core V8M implementation using Trust Zone, typically what you might have to do is add a secure element to host the root of trust. In PSOC 6, we actually integrate that secure element capability inside of the part. And so that's how we're able to achieve the three zones. So three you have areas. at least as much security, you have actually even more. That's correct. Like in terms of both hardware and software security, 
Uh, and so you have partners working on this? That's right. So Because you're talking about partners here. That's actually right. So we deliver the silicon, but we know that we need partners, for example, to implement provisioning. So we, we work with a company called Data.io and Secure Things to provide the provisioning as well as secure boot firmware capability. We also have a partner called Trust Azure, which is providing some application-specific capability in a secure uh, um, secure application ca uh, capability as well. Can we check a demo here or two here? The booth? Absolutely, let's take yeah. a look. Great. So one of one of our partners is a company called One Things, and they're implementing a LoRaWAN module using PSOC yeah. six. Yeah. They're also working with a company called eScript, which is a Bosch company, to provide um, a secure capability on top of the LoRaWAN connection. All right. So I'll have uh, Rolf here go through the demo for you and in introduce the solution. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. All right. So Hi. hello. This is Rolf from OneThings. I want to show you a module. This is our new module. It's a very tiny module. It has LoRaWAN inside. And it has the Cypress PSOC 6. So it has a dual core M0 Plus and an M4 core. And it's really ultimate for doing IoT things. Do you build this board? Yes, we build this board. And you call it one thing. So where are you based? Yeah, we're based in the Netherlands. And, uh, Is this about uh, lower run? Lo lower yes. one? Yeah, so it's. So it's long range, yeah. uh, low power data. So if we can so jump in here, so what's the demo board around here? You have the board right here. Yeah, yeah. we have the board right here. Yeah. For my application. So this is the board. This is with our module. So we have keys in there. Over here, the Bosch XDK. It's a uh, multi-sensor development kit, which we uh, connected with our module. And when we press the button, we can see the data coming over there on our dashboard. Yeah. So if you update, uh, so well, actually this data. is connected. To so is this uh, is this hundred percent security? Yes, this is hundred percent security. This uh, because hardware, software, everything secure. Yeah, we have a secure element inside PSOC six. So the secure element does do the control of the flash. And once the flash is secure, it will boot and it will start the lower one functionality. So it will start the lower one radio. Once it's compromised, the secure boot recognizes that the keys are not correct, so it won't start the lower one radio. Is this using the PSA? The, is this using the latest uh, the, uh, secure elements? Yes, it uses. It hasn't. The P success. here at the show. Yes. P6 has yeah. uh, integrated, the integrated in uh, hardware yeah. into a secure element, and it also uses the hardware acceleration, uh, the, the the encryption uh, it's acceleration to do all those functions in the hardware, and uh, they can be compromised. So this is the optimal LoRa one solution in the world. Is that what you say, Harman? Is this one or from two? security expect, uh, perspective? It is. Yes. It is. Yes, so do you have this customers is, on it? Uh, we have a lot of requests here, and uh, we're definitely going to make some customers. And we already have some customers in the Netherlands, uh, so we are launching our module at this demo, and we are sure going to roll it out as soon as possible. All right, awesome. Okay, thanks thank a you. Lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks. I put the video right here. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go. A second? No, it's less than a second. What? It's microseconds, that's exactly right. Let's hear it for Air Doctor, uh, whatever his name is, Egen, Agendorf. Yeah, correct, correct. Is that close? Ah, yeah. Agendorf, I should be German. I kind of, I like beer and I like sausage, so that makes me at least honorary German, right? <laughs> so, it takes microseconds for the, for the CPU. Now, here's the next question. How long does it take logic gates to respond to signal changes. Even less, nanoseconds. What's less? Nanoseconds. Nanoseconds, give some dev kits over here, my friend. It takes nanoseconds. And now I ask you this you. deep and philosophical question. How much faster is a nanosecond than a microsecond? <laughs> it's three zeros, that's right. That is a <laughs> long damn time, three zeros. 1,000 times faster. So the bottom line is, if you've got some 
safety critical thing or something, you should put it in our PLD. The other thing that you've got going on is when you have an MCU, you have software. And when you have software, you have a human being. And another name for a human being is a bug making machine, right? So, if, <laughs> right? That's exactly right. So if you make a bug in your software code and your, your software code is off doing whatever it's doing, it sure as hell isn't turning off the robot arm from beating itself into oblivion. And that's no bueno, as they say, some places. All right. Just some of the other stuff are over here. Flipping back and forth. It's not flipping, but it keeps it. Then after something. 